So, hi there. Uh, this next slide talk is about um, uh, some creative way of uh, using uh, honeypots. As Sven uh, already mentioned, uh, what, what they do, I will present now uh, what we do with it. Uh, the agenda is quite uh, short, so um, just about me. This is my nickname. I'm uh, working as this, and I protect these uh, for one of these in Switzerland. <laughs> but that's uh, actually my day job. There's also some, uh, I don't know, night job. I don't know if that's the right uh, naming. But uh, <clears throat> what do we want to talk today about? It's uh, watching hackers. And. Uh, There must be a reason why. There's normal one we probably heard a few times before. It's to learn how to hack, to to um, to find out um, their methods, their tools, to download uh, zero day. Don't know, whatever. That's not really new. We heard that before. So um, <clears throat> we added a new goal, and we said, okay, we want to laugh. So uh, they're just a pain in the neck, and <clears throat> why not laugh about them for <laughs> once? So we, we uh, took a tool, and that's actually Kipo. Don't know if you heard before uh, about that tool before. It's a normal honeypot. It's not a web-based, it's a shell-based. And uh, Kipo, the name, um, I think it's quite clear what it means. And the features are like with a normal honeypot. You have a fake file system, you can add fake um, file content, like a password file or um, whatever. And uh, it also stores everything you, you or the attack downloads uh, with uh, wget. That's the zero day part, just so uh, we can analyze the malware later on. Uh, it just stores everything. But uh, <clears throat> we also had uh, some features, or the, the author added some features which are really cool. And don't know if other honeypots have the same features, but there are a few fun features. It does store the session in a format you can replay. So you really can see how they worked, what they did type in, and it's in real time, the, the replay. So really see if he uh, mistyped, misspelled, uh, how fast they type, etc. Uh, the SSH connects to other hosts. Uh, it actually connects uh, nothing. It uh, acts like it would connect, but it stays on the same shell. And even more funny, the exit does not really exit, but it just clears the screen and uh, acts like it would be on the, the old host, but uh, the attack still stays on the same host. <laughs> and uh, I don't have a demo for that here, but uh, there are some locks we have, which just, uh, you can see SSH connect to another host, uh, uname, uh, two or three more tests, then exit, next host, SSH connect, and the attack it doesn't really recognize that uh, it's always the same host. So, um, we then thought, let's create some website. And we started a, a site um, where, where we um, thought we'd just do the same like Bash.org or uh, um, SMS from Gestern Nacht, uh, I think, is the, the German website. I see some guys do know that site. Uh, we thought, okay, let's just upload uh, attacks and then have users vote on, uh, <laughs> I don't know, how good the attacks are or how stupid the attackers are. And we then started uh, some way this year with, uh, with this site. It's look, it, look like, it, look like, it looks like this. You have the, the domain up there. And uh, it, it really looks the same like uh, the, the other sites I mentioned before. And that's empty, strange. The, um, we then um, had to, to program a, uh, a shell 
And the, the Kipo tool comes with uh, Ajax term, some very weird stuff, where you have to have, uh, on the server side, you have to have uh, um, a, a shell, and then on the website you have an Ajax term, and it connects to the, to the server, and you actually have a live session on the server where it replaced the, the whole session. And we thought, if we have uh, such a website which uh, makes fun of attackers, and uh, we already positioned the machine on a network, uh, the name was mentioned before, at a very big German uh, internet provider, which I hope is more or less DDoS proof. Um, so we thought, let's don't open any new holes, let's just make everything HTTP based or JavaScript based. <laughs> And so we wrote uh, uh, a shell which just emulates or looks like a normal shell, but basically it's a text area and it's a JavaScript. And that's very dark. Um, you can't really read it, I guess. Maybe we can dim the light to make it more readable. Can you dim a little bit? Uh, not really better? A lot better. Okay. Uh, you, you just missed the, the few uh, first few lines. Usually they uh, look uh, what kind of machine is it, what hardware do we have, uh, what uptime do we have. The uptime is quite important. Uh, is it, uh, will it be a client or a new uh, command or control? Um, then there is a Microsoft download where they uh, try to download the service pack 3. Uh, they usually do it to see how fast is the, the uplink. And then um, it just clears the locks. Uh, he tries to, to hide his tracks and I uh, guess uh, at, at the bottom, there's a uname to, to see what kind of system am I on. And um, then there's some uh, typing error. Then he, he wrote an exit, and now he's still on the same machine, but he doesn't recognize. And then he reconnects a new machine, new server, or at least tries to do so. And it really acts, the, the honeypot really acts as if it's uh, connecting a, another machine. Uh, the password in clear text, of course. <coughs> <laughs> then a, a uname again, just to see what kind of machine am I on. Then the LS, and the LS really emulates a real, real uh, machine. Another uh, WGET, but this time for uh, some malware. And the funny part is, he now tries to unpack it, but uh, he doesn't get the name right. <laughs> and it takes quite some time. <laughs> It's really fun to see and to, to think about what does the attacker right in that moment think? <laughs> he, now he tries to, to compile his malware. He tries to uh, compile, I think it's some kind of bot or something he, he wants to uh, um, make run. And this uh, honeypot is uh, configured to just output some Star Wars uh, quote or something every time uh, he tries to run uh, uh, an application or a binary the, the honeypot doesn't know. So uh, <clears throat> there also, he's quite confused. He, he got this, uh, this um, Star Wars quote and then he tries an ID to see, oh, what happened? And he tries to add a user, this won't work, but it doesn't say it doesn't work. It just has a segmentation fault or anything, but only at the end. So there are some attackers which try to user add 
three, four, five, six, seven times. And always at the end, there's segmentation fault, some other error. And uh, the attackers quite have some, um, some time at hand to just try it six times, seven times. OK, I will quit now the, the movie here. So uh, <clears throat> what are the plans? Now we have that um, more or less proof of concept of a website where we have the, um, some uh, very primitive sh shell emulation. And um, the, the, the real or the main problem is that the locks ha uh, contain some um, escape uh, characters or some co um, command line control characters which you have to emulate in JavaScript. It's like a left key or a clear screen or something like that. And it uh, takes quite some time to, to, uh, to find these uh, commands and to implement them in JavaScript. Although the JavaScript itself is quite short. If you look at the website, at the source code, you will see that it's quite short, the, the emulation part. We also had the idea for a geolocation. I will come back to this topic. And uh, the, the main problem is also uh, we need some automation to, to upload these scripts. Currently, it's a uh, handwork. We take the, um, the native uh, locking format and we, uh, we uh, reformat it with, uh, with a script into JavaScript array to just add it then on the website, which is all manual work. And perhaps there's even somebody in here who is a great idea now or later, just contact me. One of the ideas is this. There is um, our main source at the moment is uh, are a few installations from a cert in uh, Europe. Um, this is a map. He, um, the, the owner of that uh, of these um, honeypots creates every 24 hours or something, and uh, he has there these uh, IPs attempting to log into the honeypot and fail. These are yellow ones. The orange ones, which uh, means IP successfully locked in but didn't interact. The, the red ones, these um, entered commands on the honeypot. So our idea is to, and this must be somebody in here, so raise your hand. <laughs> so the, our idea is to, to just click on, on one of these IPs, uh, on these um, <coughs> markers, and then not only get the IP, but also to just link to the, to the script itself. So we can see um, uh, how do the attackers in Switzerland uh, work, how do the attackers in Germany work, do they use the same commands? Are they as stupid as the other ones? So that's one of our ideas, to, to get some interaction with other system. OK. I hope I was in time. So you have 10 minutes left. I have 10 minutes left. So questions? I, I still have another script, if you like. Does your uh, shell emulation has a random, random generator for uh, host information, such as CPU and operations and syntax? Um, the shell emulation is only the player. So you mean the, the emulation for the Kippo? Yeah. Um, if you install Kippo, this, um, there's a script uh, which helps you in setting up the, the host. So I can take a live system and tell Kippo to create an emulation of that live system for a honeypot. Uh, like that, you can use an asterisk box and just uh, act as if you are a voice over IP box. Um, it also adds some files you would like to have, so it really looks like a real system. And it always looks the same the next time you uh, reconnect to the same host. And if you make an SSH session from one host to the next? It stays the same. That's the funny part. Most of the guys <laughs> attacking don't really recognize. They're always attacking quite the same system, and they don't recognize. Even the IP information doesn't change? No. <laughs> <laughs> the speed changes if you download, but only a little bit. <laughs> Even the IP, just the same. It also has the same users, the same password file, 
Just the same. No, that changes as well. But uh, the rest is uh, more or less the same. The, the, the kipo, it, it's, it's quite, um, it's not that difficult to change anything. It's just a bunch of uh, Python scripts and, and a few uh, text files. And to add new commands, you just add new text files as templates and some lines of code. And then you have uh, your new host to, uh, to have fun with. So other questions? I'll try to uh, find another film. Oh, there was one. There's um. Can you please dim again a little bit? Thanks. There was another um. Like if config doesn't find the command because it doesn't know it. Uh, w get again, we had that before. Um, and this one is really cool. There's, there's even a better one, but I wasn't able to find it. Um, first, the attacker tries GCC, this doesn't work. Uh, he tries make, doesn't work. apt get, doesn't work. And then yum. And I'm not sure if it was that log or if it was another one, but First, the attacker tested uh, what kind of distribution is it. Then it said uh, Debian, as far as I know. Then he tried apt get, uh, didn't work. Then he tried to download apt with yum, <laughs> which was really fun. Aptitude doesn't work. Then wget uh, doesn't really work because he entered the command wrong. Um, then. There's a download. Then he tries to untar his, uh, ar uh, his archive he just downloaded, but unfortunately uh, he missed to enter the name of the, of the archive. It works on the second run. And then this host is really cool because he tries to run the, the code he just downloaded. And then this script just uh, prints this O and an O really, <laughs> question mark. And that O really returns all the time, except you enter a yes. And when you enter a yes, you will get a no way. <laughs> and there are some attackers which try and try and try and try, and there's also else and no way. <coughs> and they try yes, why, no, fuck off, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> and again, the attack tries to um, remove um, remove his um, his footprint on the system. What's cool to see here is. Also, the touch message brings back a um, command not found. The attacker must use some kind of script or a copy-paste or something. It just runs through. doesn't matter if it works on that host or not. It, he probably learned it somewhere that it works like this, but um, doesn't really understand what it does. Don't know. And it then, and it then ends the session. I'm not sure why he first deletes uh, his traces and then enters a new command. <laughs> I have a few minutes left still. Four. Four. Oh. So, uh, and it's not compulsory to use them up, just say. <coughs> And probably play back a little bit faster. Mm -hmm. Ah, faster. Mm 
Is it readable? No. Mm -hmm. um, you can't see anything anymore. Um, how much Apple app? Better? Well, actually, it's more or less the same. It tries to download a um, it's binary. Uh, it doesn't find Perl. Then I think he tries to download Perl um, with different uh, methods like apt-get, or just download the whole package. Quite big the package. <coughs> That's one of the problems. Many attacks just look the same. It's it's interesting to learn. Uh, they first try to find out what machine it is, how fast the internet is, uh, the, the uplink. But um, to, to really find the funny parts, you, you have to sift through tons of log files to, to find uh, yeah, the, the, the funny parts, like uh, guys trying to answer the old sometimes. Now comes another uh, Star Wars uh, quote. Yeah. What is the whole system based on? The host. No, the honeypot. The honeypot. Yeah. Uh, Python. Yeah. But, um, what is the below OS? Uh, whatever you want to have. Okay, so it's just. Usually it's Linux. What Linux? Take one. Just got another question. Yeah, please. Um, if the attacker uses uh, wget to download an exploit. Does he actually download the original exploit, yeah. or so you have access to the exploit? Yeah. Afterwards? Yeah. Okay. Please. Have you started Postgres? Are you using the the host state when they try to exit and send the machine? Have you tried, um, or do you post process the the names of hosts where they connect next? Uh, not yet. Do no. fun stuff with that. Not yet, but that would be uh, interesting, I guess. Yeah. No more questions? So, um, in this case, thank you. <laughs>